Hey guys, Jamie of the Summer Rain Channel. Welcome back. So I think I'm going to start posting my videos like on Wednesdays and on Sundays and I'll just post them at like noon. That way I have more of a consistent schedule when I'm posting them and I'm not just posting them completely at random. Today we're going to be making a do-it-yourself lip balm. I really, really love making my own lip balms. I did put the full recipe down in the description box below. So that is down there for you with all the measurements and everything like that. I also put a link to my blog. So on my blog, I go a little bit more in depth about how you formulate your recipe to make a lip balm. So if you want to make your own recipe, I go a little bit more in depth on the blog. So hop over and check that out. If you haven't done so already, be sure you hit that subscribe button and let's go ahead and learn how to make lip balm. So I really wanted to go over the main ingredients that we use in our lip balm before we actually make it. So there's three main ingredients that are going to go in any lip balm. You're going to have waxes, butters, and oils. So in this recipe, the wax that I'm using is beeswax. So we have to have the beeswax because we need this balm to stay solid, right? Like it'd be gross and weird if it was in your pocket and it melted on you, or if it's like on your counter and it's all melting, we don't want that. So we need the beeswax for the hardness in the balm. Another reason why I like the beeswax is when you put it on, beeswax is gonna create like a layer on your lips and it's gonna prevent moisture loss. So the beeswax is gonna go ahead and hold um, the oils and stuff right on your lips and create like a protective layer. The next ingredient group that we have are our butters. So I like to use two different butters in here. I use cocoa butter, which is a very like hard and brittle butter. And then I use shea butter, which is a very soft butter. Now shea butter melts on contact with your skin. So you'll notice when you're using this lip balm and like you put it on, you will feel it starting to melt right onto your skin. I really like the way that that feels. Now the creaminess or like the creamy like texture that you have in a lip balm actually comes from your butter. So if you don't like the feel of it, swap out your butters to get one that you, you know, works for you. Now the third type of ingredient that we use is our oils. I'm using olive oil. So olive oil is gonna leave like a shine behind. So it's like a lip gloss, but yeah, like a lip gloss consistency in a lip balm. Now, if you don't want the shine, go ahead and swap the olive oil <laughs> out for like an avocado oil or something like that. I really think you can have a lot of fun with this. So once you have the base recipe down for a lip balm, you can really have a lot of fun experimenting. What if I switch out this butter or I add in this oil or I change this up or I change that up? Um, really the sky's the limit and it's such an easy recipe to experiment with. Um, I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. And then a thing that I like, and I've spent a lot of time experimenting with lip balms, is you're not using big quantities of ingredients. So when I'm making it, I'm making like an ounce or half an ounce at a time. So you can really make a lot of different lip balms with just a small amount of product. Without further ado, let's go ahead and actually learn how to make a lip balm. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab a heat safe container. Now you wanna make sure that you get one with like a pouring spout, then that way it's gonna be easier to pour into your lip balm tubes. First, we're gonna go ahead and add the beeswax into our heat safe container. Next, we'll go ahead and add the cocoa butter, shea butter, and lastly, we're gonna add the olive oil. And then we're gonna pop this on a double boiler until it's completely melted. So I just went ahead and pulled this off the double boiler, but before you actually pour it into your mold or you add your cool down ingredients, grab a little spoon and just put it in there really quick. Now I'm gonna set this here for just a minute to cool. I'm gonna pop this back on the double boiler for it to warm up um, and then I'll be right back. So what you're gonna do is just allow this to cool for a minute or so, and then you can go ahead and you can check what the consistency of your lip balm is gonna be like. So say if this were to be really hard, then what I would do is I would add a bit more carrier oil. If this were to be, say it's too soft and it doesn't seem to be setting up right, I'd go ahead, I'd add a little bit more like cocoa butter or you could add some more beeswax. Now doing it like this is gonna give you an opportunity to adjust your lip balm before you actually pour it into the mold. So I'm pretty happy with the consistency that I have. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reheat my lip balm stuff and then I'll come over and we can do the cool down ingredients. So before you actually add your cool down ingredients, you can heat this up as much as you need to. So go ahead and perfect your consistency before you add the cool down. 
So in the cool down, we're going to add our flavoring oil. Now I'm using strawberry and we're going to add just a bit of mica powder. And then we're just going to give that a good mix. Um, you can use any flavoring oil that you would like. I'll actually put a link down in the bottom in the description for you to check out different flavorings. And then with the mica powder, you just want to make sure that the mica powder that you're using is safe for use on your lips. So now we're going to go ahead and pour this into our lip balm tubes. Now I try not to fill it all the way. So let me show you here. I'm going to pour it in and I'm going to stop just a little bit before the top. Now the reason why I pour this way is typically you're going to wind up with some sinkholes in your lip balm. So you have to re-pour and that way it's not like heaping over the top. So I'm going to let this cool down just a little bit. I'm going to heat this. I'm just going to keep it on the double boiler and then I'll come back. I'll show you the sinkholes and we can fix them. So while these are cooling, geez, maybe for like a minute or two, I just put this back in the double boiler. I didn't have the double boiler on, but I just let it kind of sit in the bath water just to keep it in like a liquid state. And as you can see here, we're getting some sinkholes, which is completely normal. So as it's cooling, it's kind of creating a sinkhole. So I like to come in one more time and then I'm just going to re-pour the tops and that way your lip balm is going to look a little bit nicer than if you just left it like that. So this time I'm actually going to fill it all the way up to the top. Whoop. <laughs> I overfilled on that one. And then now we're going to allow these to cool completely. When they're cooling, you don't want to pop the lid on them because you might wind up with some condensation in your lip balm lid. So just go ahead and wait until they're completely cooled before you do that. So our lip balms have cooled all the way. Um, this one, I didn't really spill much around the edge, but on this one, it kind of dripped down. So if you have that, I just grab a little bit of a paper towel and kind of clean up the edges a little bit. Now, because we're dealing with a bunch of oils, your lip balm tube, if you spilt it, is going to be quite oily. So what I do is I just grab a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a cotton round, and then you can kind of wipe it off just a little bit better so it's not all slippery on you. And now that they're cooled, we can go ahead and put the lids on. And if you have labels, go ahead and pop them on. You don't need them, but I feel like it just makes them a little bit nicer. And there's our finished lip balm. So this is the one that I made in the video, and then this is the one that I made for the blog post. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a lot of fun making your own lip balms, and I really hope you take the time to swap out some ingredients and really make this recipe your own. It's such an easy recipe to customize. Um, and then you can also, like I showed you earlier, you can test the consistency before you actually pour it. So you really don't have to worry about wasting any of your product. Bye.